So you think one of the sensors ground it out or something like that? Yeah, something pulling, pulling the amps down. Okay. Because I would think, in my mind, it's fairly un, unusual that both ECMs would read the same thing. You know what I mean? Right. Other, if there's not another issue, you know what I mean? So yeah, it's uh, whenever you change ECMs and the symptoms stay the same, they usually we start digging digging deeper on that one. Okay. <clears throat> but at the dealership right now, um, in the midst of this whole deal, within a couple of weeks, we kind of want to get somebody else's eyes on it because it kind of warned me out, you know. Right. So, well, maybe it's time to get a set of eyes on it. That's, that's why it's at the dealership right now. But. Yeah, and it's, it's really hard when uh, you have a, an ECM that's corroded so bad that the plugs are, are locked in to really see where all that where all else that corrosion has gone and and what all is has eaten through because if you've got a a ground wire chafed or or something near one of the the sensor supply lines it can start pulling it down okay you know and i kind of thought we'd eliminate all of that by changing those harnesses you right. had, we didn't have any choice anyway because you couldn't get them out of the ecm but i thought maybe you know a lot of that would be eliminated because there are some major ground on them harnesses, you know. Right. And uh, is the the bulkhead connectors? Are they all? Do they look good? Or they got corrosion in them? Or the yeah. The the one that the one got replaced. We changed uh, the sensor harness and the power harness, the actuator harness, and then we changed the uh, all three of them. We changed the OEM harness and the bulkhead connector for the OEM. Obviously, you put a whole new bulkhead in to the firewall. Right. But the other ones, the, there's two more, I believe, on this truck for the OEM part of it, for like the dash, I assume, and all that stuff. Um, those look clean, you know, they're not new by any means, but they're not corroded or anything. You can unplug them and stuff. Sure. But I guess, um, would that take some time, Dave? I mean, because the reason I asked would it take some time to draw that code is because you can... Sometimes you can drive this thing for like 10, 15, 20 miles before you see this warning light. Right. And sometimes you can drive it for two blocks. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's usually, um, like something's grounding out and pulling that voltage down, it can be, you know, whether it heats up and, and finally expands enough that it touches or whether it rubs against something else just enough as the truck vibrates down the road to finally make a connection um, to start pulling voltage. It's, it's hard to say, you know, what it, what it is that's actually pulling it down. Would it be, not to cut you off, but would it be in one of the harnesses that's been replaced, do you think? Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it out of the question. I mean, but do you think a new harness wouldn't have a, have any chafing, chafed wires in it or something? Right. What else? What else that didn't get replaced, like the the major grounds coming to the you know, or to the starter and then up? Right, your battery grounds. Um, Could those the, possibly be an issue too? Yeah, okay. and the uh, the the key on um, 12 volt line coming down. Okay. And it comes in on 1026, I think. I see that thing have problems, and uh, that gives you some crazy codes because it starts to drop the voltage when it goes. The ECM connection to the cooling plate or the block sometimes okay. uh, that's corroded up. You're not getting a good. It's not seating good. Jeffrey, are you? Uh, did you just say that the ECM was pulling the voltage in the ground off the starter? Um. No, I was just I was just wondering if possibly because that's the only part of the major heart or you know, wiring that hasn't really been looked at real hard. You know, other than cleaning the battery connections and cleaning the ground and the, on the chassis. Right, but sometimes these ECMs are wired to pull it off the starter solenoid. It'll have a couple of purple wires going up there. Well, to yeah, yeah, yeah. These it does get powered up from there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that that needs to go away. It really does. You need to get back to the two fuses in between the ECM and the firewall. Okay. And yeah. wire that the ground and the tops. And just chop that off and get it to one battery. Okay. Uh, I'll just about guarantee you that's what's going on. Think so? Yep. Yep. I've run into it many times. And First losing juice between through the starter. 
Yep. And the ground and that whole that whole mess there is just a really bad setup. And it starves the ECM for voltage. So if, you know, if Dave agrees with that, I mean, if you're getting low voltage, you know, you're going to, you know, starve the ECM and the sensor. Everybody's working off that ground. Is that right, Dave? Yeah, that's a I don't know where I've seen that, too, where some of that pulled from there. And that's a terrible place to pull power because that's dirty power. And it deals with a lot of surges and drops. And then uh, the ground through the starter are mm -hmm. bad. Okay. And you can really give the ECM tips if you're pulling your 12 volts from there. Okay. Yeah, I had a customer call this the other day and he had that same setup and he checked that out there and then he he come up and told me he says it ended up coming back that he found a, a ground going to the body of the truck which was the real culprit too so I've never heard of that before but I definitely uh, you just gotta get that to your best battery and make sure you're not dealing with that anymore and I think it'll go away I usually tell everybody that I sell an ECM you know, to check that out and everything, but I, maybe I didn't. You know what, I, I kind of blame myself a little bit, too, because one of the first ECMs I bought from you, Terry, yeah. um, when I got it all back together, I had um, not a similar issue, but an issue with it. I don't remember exactly what it was. Yeah. I remember you telling me to run a separate power line to that. Yeah. I did, and I think that resolved that situation. So I'm yeah. an idiot move on my part. I forgot all about that. <laughs> I well, don't know about that. It's this stuff's tough, but yeah, make sure you do the ground in everything. Just eliminate that. It doesn't, you know, tie in with anything else except the ECM, and it's just a dumb design. Yeah. Hope you try that, and uh, we'll give us a call back or give me a call back and see how that worked out for you. One, one more little question for the both of you. Okay. Um, the customer originally, when it originally came in. He said it was acting up on and off. Yeah. So it would work fine. No lights, nothing. It was not derating him or anything like that. Uh -huh. And he said the only time that it seemed to run fine and there was nothing going on is when his temp gauge in the dash was operating the way it should. It was showing 180 degrees. Now, ever since I've never gotten it up to temperature, this thing, the engine temperature by my temp gun, it shows the operating temperature shows 170 degrees or whatever, but the gauge only shows 140 some degrees. Mm. Is that related? You think? That'd be Dave's one. <laughs> yeah, if you're um, on those on that sensor voltage where you're getting that 352 code and then logging all those other ones. Um, oh. if, if you're pulling to ground, then that those sensors aren't getting all the juice that they need, and you'll get some erroneous readings coming up to your dash. I get you. I get you. So it's stealing power away from that sensor. Yeah. And it's not reading right. Yep. Okay. Well, maybe we're on to something. God, that'd be a blessing, you guys. <laughs> this thing's been ongoing for about a month and a half. So that would be a blessing if that's going on. Well, I'll let them guys know what to look for and, and where to dig. Hopefully we've got good news. Okay. I'll let you guys know either way. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Dave. Sure. Yeah. Well, talk to you later, Jeff. Okay.